the Aladdin kerosene heater with its trademark blue flame. Actually, it is called a blue flame heater. And this is manufactured in Japan. You can buy them online. They're not cheap. It's about 50 or 60,000 yen. Uh, I'm Canadian, so that's roughly $700 Canadian. But the design hasn't changed in about 50 years, which means it is very easy to work on and maintain. It has uh, controls here that you can get more or less flame. Uh, you can looks like it's brand new, doesn't it? But really, I've been taking pretty good care of it, but it's easy when everything's metal and there's very little plastic on it. It's pretty simple to understand. And I've just finished putting in new mica glass, which isn't really glass, it's mica, and the metal frame that goes around the glass on both sides. Uh, that had to be replaced, and that was easy enough to do. And I just changed the wick, and the wick, of course, is what is inside, which carries the kerosene up. That's too high. And the wick was a little tricky. I did it seven years ago. Uh, the first time wasn't that easy. I had a friend of mine, a Japanese friend, come over and we did it together. Uh, he had one of these himself. So this time I thought I would do it and the instruction manual came and it's, uh, yeah, pretty much, um, pretty much impossible for me to read through this by myself. And this isn't the kind of thing you just ask someone to help you with because they don't know about it themselves. So, I went online and there's some great YouTube videos. I'll post a link in the video for, um, for the one video that I found really, really helpful. And if you need to change the wick on your Aladdin kerosene lamp, that's the place to go to. As far as the lamp, uh, as far as the, uh, the heater itself, uh, it's very, very durable. It's like I say, it's easy to work on. It's easy to maintain. Uh, it's kind of a foolproof system. It has an earthquake sensor in it. So if this thing actually starts to move, if it starts to rock, uh, the sensor will go off. Everything will shut down. Uh, you can probably get about one full day's heating of the house with it, but we only, we live in Shizuoka, so we only use it uh, during the evening. It's usually not cold enough during the day. Occasionally we will. And the nice thing is it has this top that you can put something on, uh, such as a pot of food like chili or stew or something, and or else you could put on a, a pot of hot water like I do here. And because it's so dry here, this helps bring a little moisture into the into the air so we don't uh, we don't feel like it's too dry in the house. That's quite useful. We have cooked on it before. And uh, it throws a lot of heat, but not too much. It's kind of, you know, it's child safe. Um, I can't speak enough about, highly enough about this. Of course, it is kerosene, so it means that you'll have to get some ventilation going in the house. Um, I've got uh, two windows open upstairs where most of the heat is going. And people have asked me before, why don't you use uh, a different source of heat? We have this massive air conditioner heater uh, that is about three years old. And that will heat the house, but, well, it'll heat this room and it'll heat the upstairs. But it's not a very nice heat. It's, uh, the heat, the electric heat is kind of, it's kind of breezy. It's much, much drier. It doesn't really make you feel that warm and once it's turned off the heat dissipates really quickly so this is uh, we found is just a more consistent uh, warmer heat and it's more pleasing to the eye of course and it has the the, the nice dual function of being a something that you can cook on and heat the house with and hey should there be an earthquake and we lose power which has happened before you're guaranteed to have a source of heat. That's the Aladdin kerosene heater. It hasn't changed in about 50 years. Any questions? Please ask in the comment section. I'll do my best. Ta-ta for now.